just driving along down towards Mackay, down the Queensland coast, and I thought I'd take a moment to share with you what we can see with our towing mirrors and our reversing camera on the back of the Jayco. So if you look up the top here, we've got our Jayco rear camera, and you can see it's pretty clear out the back, so I can see a long way in a lot of detail. I can also switch to lower down pointed mode so I can see the direct back so when I'm reversing that's really useful it switches on automatically on the reverse when just driving I just have the rear out it's as good as a rear view mirror so this is a sphere system that's just clicked over our rear view mirror out to the side here you can see the standard land cruiser mirrors and these are actually pretty good I can see maybe about three or four meters uh, behind out the back and I've got on clicked on I've got the Malenko Aero um, mirrors and these show me a little bit further out the rear of the van so through these mirrors I can actually see the back corner of the van so in combination with the standard Land Cruiser mirrors the Malenko clip-ons and my camera up here I'm able to get some pretty good visibility all the way around the van and took the kids and brought our first caravan <laughs> Steph, Jed, Alex, and Harry. We are the To Doing family. What's on your to-do list? We've just come into the info centre in Mackay, and there's a dump point and a tap here that you can see behind me. The uh, guy in the info centre just told us that apparently it's been voted Australia's best water. So we just double checked there was no potable water sign on it, but he said, no, definitely go for it. It's drinkable and apparently Australia's best water. So Harry, you guys will be the judge of that, won't you? The good water critiques. Harry, you put the tap on, did you? How's it going, the hose on? There you go, you did it. All good. Harry's come in to check the water as it fills up. We can see on the gauge up here how much water is in each of our three tanks. This morning it was here. Yeah, here, here and here. We had three reds this morning, didn't we? Yeah. So I think we're on a little bit of a lean to the left, which means that it appears a little bit fuller than it is because the uh, sensor is on the left. Get that back in, Harry. There we go. But we can at least get an idea about how much water we've got going in. Oh, one of them's full. We are camped up right next to a mountain bike track and it's 12 kilometers of mountain bike trails here at the Rowellan Scout Park. So the kids are having a ball. Uh, yesterday was a Sunday, there were heaps of people here. It's really quiet today. So we've got to basically do ourselves. So the boys are out there having a bit of fun. boys are off riding at the moment we're parked up uh, basically in here and the kids are off riding around all these green tracks they have an absolute ball but the whole park itself goes 12 kilometers it's massive we're just in Mackay for a couple of nights so we're taking advantage of just doing a bit of a quick day trip around we've marked some spots off on wiki that were of interest to us and basically just hopping from spot to spot just to have a look and get a feel for the town and that's the way we like to do it sometimes for quick trips like this. Still got to look around and know whether you want to come back one day. Continuing our tour of Mackay. Heading out to a big lookout. So Pollock can Street. See everything from up here. Pollock Street lookout. Looking out over Mackay, out to the port, across the river. It's a big place. Wow. It's got distances to everything. Meteor Tower is right there. Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. Wow. Yes, it is. This is accurate. You can see where the river joins out into the ocean, so that is what becomes an estuary where your salt water meets with your fresh water. You can see a sugar mill out in the background. That's where my uncle works. So he works, lives on a sugar cane farm, and works at the mill.
checking out Blue Water Lagoon, which is this big free pool and play park, splash park. And then alongside it is the Blue Water Walk. And this takes you along the river, one of the only blue rivers here in Mackay. Gives you a nice little look out over top of it. You can see the radio tower out there that we were just at looking out over Mackay. So now we've come down closer to the waterfront. It's nicely set up, Mackay. Yeah, this is a great area. Yeah, I look great. It looks perfect for the kids. This is beautiful too. How's the apartment? It's just looking out over the water, over the lagoon. Good backyard. One thing you learn doing a lap of Australia is it's actually next to impossible to do everything and see everything. At some point you've got to decide, you know, no matter how good that looked on Instagram or on Google, Facebook or Wikicamps, you, you simply can't do everything, otherwise you're just going to be flat out. So today we spent a lot of the time in the caravan uh, doing some schoolwork. The boys have ridden their bikes around the scout camp and then we visited my aunt and we're off to my uncle's now on the sugarcane farm after doing a bit of a tour around Mackay. And that gives us a bit of a look around Mackay. We've got an idea of Mackay, we've seen it. If we had more time, yeah, you'd certainly spend more time here going swimming the great beaches too. But you have to keep it real and you can't do everything. So sometimes you've just got to cut your losses. And in this case, we're not going to go swim at the splash park or um, hang out around the beach. We're just going to get what we want to get done with our visiting relatives. That boys, that's not a stick on the burn again. So they don't burn it here, they just yeah. grab it. Just arrived at uh, my uncle's place, and you can see we've got banana trees, mango trees everywhere, sugar cane off onto the field. It is a very Queensland sort of place. The dragon fruit, and you can see here little buds just growing. The ants are getting in there to get some of the sap out of the flower, but these will turn into the exotic dragon fruit just growing here up against the chook shed. This is a It'll mulberry. Make your hands go purple. Whoop. There. Mulberry. So you That's just eat right. it. That one is. Oh. So the one he's got's right. There you go, Al. Have a go. Don't get it on your top. You have to wash your hands. Have a bite. Which one have one there, Dad? Mm. <laughs> Happy with that? Mulberry bush. What do you think, Has? That's good. <laughs> Give me a look. Give me a look at your face. That one's fine. Yep, that one's all over Harry. Yeah. <laughs> There's banana trees everywhere. Yep. I've been issued with my cane cutter's knife, so um, <laughs> Cooley saved this one, my Uncle Cooley's saved this one for us. And uh, we're going to take that. So what do you reckon? Take the bananas off first? Yep. So up here? Yeah, up high as you can, so I can still tie a rope around it. Yeah, do you bag them up. to ripen them? I'll have to hang them up for a week or so. Yeah? In a bag? Or? Pretty heavy. No. No? See how heavy it is. Are these um, the... Little fingers, what are they called? called? Sugar. Sugar bananas. Yeah, the sugar bananas. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at the water coming out of it. I want to take you it. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> it? Just watch the juice, it'll stain Nothing. your clothes. Oh, really? What oh, does it? Yeah, it's just, just pouring just out. out the top. See how wet it is? them down carefully. Alright, and then take down the banana tree. So, take down the banana tree. So, the idea is you cut these back, what, every time after all the fruit's gone? They only have one piece of fruit per yeah. tree. Per and tree. And you're better off knocking off the. Um, Knocking down the tree so no virus gets back down in the ground from Okay, there. so we're going to take Gosh. it down where? Just from the top here, right in sections. The, right at the base, mate. I'll undo the rope. Okay. Okay, wow. so we're going to take it down with the cane cutters on, which you've seen, it's bloody sharp. And uh, <laughs> so you take it right back to the roots and then it'll regrow again. Where? Oh, wow, nothing to that. <laughs> That's it. Take it out, Jed. What do I do? Have a look at it. What I normally do is put it back in. It's boy? still there. It's still fucking unhealthy. Oh, Jimmy. Huh? Well done. Well done. Look at that. Yeah. Remember they'll shoot up. No, no, no. They're going to put big. it back in there close up and what they oh, do wow. is expose their thorns underneath so if you're walking in bare feet bang they'll just close on you close on you touch get... one jed oh. these are actually closing as you touch them not never seen that before give, it, give it 10 minutes and they'll open up again yeah. just trying to protect themselves so the thorns come to the top wow. jed walk on one no. <laughs> and uh 
we're gonna go and get a bit of sugar cane here. I was keen since Burke and Sugar Cane Farm to have a big piece of sugar cane, so we're allowed to come down and get a piece and have it for dessert tonight. Check it out. the last couple of days has been the mountain bike track which is huge it goes right around the property you can do as little or as much as you like so the boys take their walkie talkies off and go and do a lap and they've done that frequently they've absolutely loved it there's heaps of space to run and to play and it's pretty quiet and peaceful as well so it's been a really super stay for us we've really loved it now we're heading on to the next stop We've been seeing us stuck at these signs along the road here, along the Bruce Highway. Are we there yet, Mum? Are we there yet, Dad? How long to go yet, Mum? Still a long way to go, kids. Stop. Bit entertaining. They're arguably the world's most annoying signs, so I don't have the kids telling me I have the signs in front of me and then they will repeat it. So, well played, Queensland, well played. What are they saying? Still two hours. Still two hours to Rocky, kids. <laughs> That's exactly Harry, isn't that amazing? <laughs> this is our free camp for the night. We're just in just out of Yamba, which is about 30 minutes from Rockhampton south, and we've got this spot pretty much to ourselves. It's a pretty big uh, four hours of driving today. We didn't with the boys had a little bit to eat before we left. Uh, around, I don't know, 1 o'clock, or well, 12 o'clock. We got in here around uh, around 4 o'clock, so four hours of driving non-stop. We've had a late lunch around 4 o'clock, so we'll have a light dinner and off to bed. But good driving, kids did well, all up, pretty good. We've just left the overnight rest area that we've been at last night. It's four minutes to 12, bit of a typical morning for us. The boys have done some schoolwork. Justin's done a bit of maintenance around the car and we've all uh, had a chance to catch up on everything that we needed to. Now we're going to head off into Rockhampton and check out the zoo this afternoon. We've parked up here in the car park at the Rockhampton Zoo. We've just managed to get somewhere that we've got sun so that we can continue to charge up our batteries throughout the afternoon while we're checking out the zoo. It's a beautiful garden area. It's right near the Botanic Gardens here in town. So it looks like a great place to spend some time. So this is completely free here in Rockhampton, open seven days a week, 8 to 4.30. And we're going to come in and work our way around. You can see there's a bunch of different animals. On the cassowary and Haz has just spotted him. You see it, Haz? This one's a bit easy to spot. Yeah. Do you think he's sleeping? Cool looking bird. Cool that they make something like this available to the public for free here in Rockhampton. Wombat's actually outside. Not very often you get to see a wombat at zoos that are actually up and awake. 
actually enjoying the sunshine. I'm in Tassie, I've never seen so many. Cradle Mountain, we looked up. Maddie, we looked up and there's like six to eight of them just walking around. Yeah. Most of them seem lost. Stacks on. The Rockhampton Zoo is predominantly a rescue zoo, so there's lots of animals that have been hit by cars or that might be blind that can no longer live safely or would survive out in the wild, so they're looked after and they reside here at the Rockhampton Zoo. Alright, we just pulled up, just checking levels. There's the hotel. There's a lot of room. Nice and flat. We level? Happy with this? There's a Lions Playground across the road. We're going to go check that out. Campfire. There's firewood. It's pretty good. There you go. We've got happy hour underway. And we're going to sit here for a few hours as the sun goes down. Then we'll go find something to do tonight. Hi. 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 On the way to a rodeo. So there's practice for a rodeo anyway. On at the Royal Mail Hotel. It's free. So we're keeping rolling with the free stuff. We're going to head in grab ourselves a spot in the stands and watch some of the bull riding action. The last time we saw a rodeo was up in Darwin when we were invited along to the rodeo. Check out the video above. But let's go see what they've got to offer for us here in Queensland. We don't go out at night very often, do we? We don't, not a lot. We um, tend um, because wherever we are, we're either with people or we're sort of just there to sleep the night and then check out the town during the day. So, a rare night outing. It's night to doing family. This is uncharted territory. The Great Western. Back, back parkings. Queensland's got a win. Here we go. This is the entry to the rodeo. We've just pulled in here at the Wharf Caravan Park in Maryborough. What a nice feel. This place has about it. She apologised that it's pretty small and quiet and I'm like, actually, that's exactly what we're yep. like. Yeah, we're not after busy. And just here, straight out front, we've got the marina, the wharf and water. So we've got power, water. How much is it a night? $27.50 without kids. There you go. So $27.50 for a base. There is $5 for kids. And then the marina and the um, but there's also up here a restaurant, there's a camp kitchen, there's a barbecue area overlooking the wharf which I think we're going to have dinner at tonight. Um, you can have dinner at the restaurant or breakfast at the restaurant, it's got everything. I accept. Two minutes walk into town too. Alright, Harry's noticed something crossing Already the road. Already crossing things and Mary Poppins. <laughs> On the pedestrian crossings. That's uh, the building over there that Mary Poppins' author was born in and who lived and lived in. So Mary Poppins is over here. We'll show you as we go over. On the crossing. Uh, don't get long. No, they didn't give us long, did they? Right, here we go. Tells us here. That's a 
Is it talk? Talking oh, I talked in the last one, didn't it? In the last movie. So this building behind me here is a former bank and it's the building that the author of Mary Poppins grew up in. She was born in 1899 and she lived here and her father was a bank manager. If you know the story of Mary Poppins, you will know that Mary Poppins looked after the bank's children, the banks, and her their father was also a bank manager. So she's brought a little bit of her real life boys into that story. Has it? Cherry Tree Lane here. There's artworks inspired by the stories of Mary Poppins. That picture there in the movie, in the last movie, um, that's when they went into the pot to fix the crack. That picture over there. Ah, we're gonna have a look at it. Back of the story place. Story bank. Pop in. So there's actually eight versions of the books. I guess they're more well known now for their movie, but they'd be kind of cool to get the books. Films. We watch Mary Poppins Returns over a Daydream Island and the original Mary Poppins. And then there's another one called Saving Mr. Banks, which is detailing some of the life of uh, P.L. Travers and creating the movie with Disney. Into the character room, Harry. So this is the Cabinet of Wonders, so we can open up all of the doors and the drawers and everything. What's in this one? Oh no, they're upside down. Help, help. Oh, this help, is help. number two. <laughs> that was in number two. Remember? Mrs. Clary Corey. Tuppence. Oh, she's the pigeon lady. Yeah. Remember that the kids in the first Mary Poppins, mm. they gave her money and bought a bag of seed to feed the pigeons. It's tuppence for feed. So this is a cool way to get ideas for telling your stories. They've suggested that when you've got an idea of the places and the people in your story, you can draw yourself up a map like this one and then use the map to help get ideas about what might happen in your story. All right, where are we, Alex? I'm occasionally you are... bossy, but lovable. That That's pretty much sums you up. Occasionally bossy, but lovable. Jed okay. was somewhat messy, but under control. No, aspires to greatness. Oh, aspires to greatness. Are you nearly there? No, where am I? I'm so where I am. Practically perfect. Practically That's probably disagreeable without a morning coffee. Ah, oh, I reckon it'd be amazingly energetic. Practically perfect. I would say that. This place is absolutely magical. Parking if you're just passing through. Right there, getting solar. Good time to inspect the roof of the van too. We're at the gardens right in the middle of town here in Maryborough. It's a stunning little town and there's heaps to explore on foot. You don't need to drive around, just walk around. But we've come to this outdoor war memorial. So we've got this digger here. going down to check out the wharf, aren't we, Has? What's down there? A barbecue. So we're going to use the barbecue. Let's set up the barbecue. We've got butterfly lamb tonight. It's going to cook it on low on a tray. We're going to set up to have dinner here as the sun goes down. 
Working hard, Jed? Or how are they working? <laughs> Good spot. We're heading into the information centre here in Maryborough. They've got a great setup, and we're exploring the Fraser Coast, home of Mary Poppins. We're coming into the info centre here in Maryborough, hopefully to grab a map of Fraser Island if we can. Let's see if we can find one. quite hard to get some good information about the Fraser Island so hopefully we can get enough here at least I'm talking online there's not a lot of good itineraries and information so we're gonna see what we can find yeah. out here and build together through Solway, through Jinjin Childers past Harvey Bay and we spent the night in Maryborough and now we're gonna go down to head across to Fraser Island